Welcome to Modeling Fundamentals in Power Pro Structures. In this second part, we'll be navigating around the MicroStation environment, and I'll have a few tasks for you to practice. And I'd really strongly encourage that you practice these until you're really confident in being able to use a lot of these tools, because like I tell a lot of my people in my training courses, if you can't get these basic fundamentals um, of navigating around the model and so forth, then nothing else matters, particularly when it comes to the 3D modeling of steel and concrete. So let's kick off by talking about the, the, the mouse and the mouse functions within this environment. So we've got a little graphic here. Um, hopefully this will make it nice and easy for you. In basic terms, to select or pick an object, we will use the left mouse button. Uh, when we are prompted for selection, the left mouse is also accept. The right mouse button is to reject a selection or to reset. Okay. By hitting the left and the, and the right mouse button at the same time, we'll invoke a tentative snap. And we'll be using a tentative snap a lot. I, I use them more than any other snap within the, um, the power product environment. Um, the tentative snaps are very, very useful uh, tool for uh, creating start points and intermediate points and so forth as you're uh, tracking your way around the model for insertion. So have a look at that. That's what the basis of, I guess, um, our mouse description will be. All right, so let's kick off back at the desktop. We're going to restart our Power Pro structures because you remember rightly we shut it down. Um, it will default to the last file that we were at, which is our sample on the desktop. Okay. And the first thing we're going to notice here is you'll notice that the views, we've, we had one view there when we exited before, and now we have three. Okay, This is because MicroStation, the, the MicroStation interface actually has two different types of save. It saves the metadata, okay, but it also saves the setting and the environment that, 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 that we have. Okay, so now I'm a big fan of the control, control F, control S, control O, etc, etc. And I encourage you to get used to sort of what does what in here as well. So what um, control F is going to do is going to save the latest screen capture and so forth um, that was done as, as our little thumbnail, etc, etc. So I've just made some changes in there. Now if I go control F, these settings and, 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 and the views and so forth will be uh, the last to be remembered. Now I'm just pointing down the lower left down there. That is our prompt bar. We will be, you can see down there that the settings have been saved. Okay, so whenever I continually looking down the lower left there for the prompts. So I'm just going to kick off by putting in a work frame. I'm not really going to do anything pro steely yet, but I just want something to a basis to work on. You can see down the lower left here, I've clicked the work frame button, and you can see down the bottom, enter the origin, reset to use the ACS, which is the UCS origin. So I just hit the reset, which is right mouse, and again, next prompt, enter the X axis, so I go reset again, which is right mouse. Okay. So I'm just going to um, close down this work frame. I just want to put a work frame in there. We'll be using that a little bit later. Okay, but what we're going to kick off, I'm going to kick off with a couple of tasks for you to practice just to get the hang of this user interface. All right, so first thing we're going to do, I'm going to start with a smart line, which is a, a polyline is the other terminology. Some of the things to get used to in MicroStation, it does more than one thing at once. Okay, it's a very, very intuitive package. So I can do my corners as chamfered, I can do them as radius, I can do them as sharp. All of this stuff, it'll do it on the fly as you go. Okay, in this instance, I'm going to keep it pretty basic. So I just want lines with square corners. I'm going to pick a nominal spot in space, and you can see that we have a cube here. That is our AccuDraw focal point. Okay, that's what they call this, this little cube here. 
okay and you can see as I cruise around it kind of snaps to the or locks to the to the to the quadrants okay if I go enter if I hit the enter button it actually locks it at that quadrant if I hit enter again it releases it okay if I lock it to a quadrant it will only go the left and right now what I just hit what I'm toggling here is I'm toggling T for top S for side F for front for my focal point alternatively you can toggle E which is just a cycle okay and, and E will cycle through okay so practice that now the procedure for drawing stuff is you get your focal point laid at the right at the right sort of point and then as you can see as I'm drawing going out in the in the x-axis you can see AccuDraw is, is sort of following it I've locked it there in the X and I've typed in one meter and I'm going to pick the side that I wanted it to go on all right we, you don't go enter like AutoCAD enter actually locks remember it, it locks it in the plane so again I'm going to lock it in the plane and you can see here it remembers the last value it, it's defaulting to the last value it's going hey you used a meter last time would you like to go a meter again okay it's really clever very very intuitive okay so I'm gonna lock it and you can see here that if I because it's locked I can go and I can snap to, to another location which is pretty funky all right so you can lock it in the plane type in a value let's go 500 here okay and let's say just for fun I miss the snapping point if I go control Z it takes it back so right so I pick the wrong location control Z takes me back to my last location okay very very friendly I'd like you to practice that quite a bit I want you to get really good at this okay because nothing else matters if we're no good at this all right remember when I'm finished number one I want to reset that element selection okay otherwise it's going to keep drawing lines on me till the end of time okay you must tell it to stop I'm finished with this function now okay and that's what element selection does all right let's go one step further okay you can either hit number uh, number eight okay or hit the delete button to get rid of stuff so another smart line just again in space don't forget to, to lock your focal point get your focal point set and I can lock it type in a value um, and pick the direction now I want you to toggle the focal point so I'm just hitting E and I'm, I'm moving that focal point around in its in its axes okay it's really cool very very clever okay practice that heaps we need you to get really good at this okay element selection to cancel okay let it know you're finished all right um, that's a smart line too so it's a, or a polyline you, you 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 would call that all right now the third task and this one's probably going to be a, a little bit trickier actually before I show you that let me show you a rectangle okay very intuitive um, microstation is okay if you have a look we'll just scroll around if you have a look at the AccuDraw it's highlighted the X and Y axes depending on where we go so we don't actually lock it in a plane it knows I'm dragging my cursor up okay or I'm dragging my cursor out this is what you must be talking about okay so I can just type in some manual dimensions into there and it will just go the right direction it's all very cool all right so now we're going to have a have a little look at our at our snaps okay don't forget to check that your element selections finished all right now down the bottom what we've got is we've got our our running snaps our key point snaps are our standard snaps our end point midpoint so forth and we can we can um, we can actually uh, invoke different snaps like your perpendicular near point midpoint etc by selecting one of these 
as a one-shot operation. If you double click on it, it becomes center as an example all the time now till I tell it to do something else. So, but key point is your, is your, is your basic snap. All right, and you can see here, we'll get a yellow, you get a little yellow cross with the three little blue dots saying that it's the key point snap that's being invoked here. If I hover away from that corner, we get a little dashed line. That is, that is an implied snap, kind of saying this is the first that meet the criteria. And if I hit the left and right mouse button together, that is a tentative snap. Okay, you want to get really good at these tentative snaps. Okay, if I reject it, it just drops it. Okay, so left and right together on an implied snap and then accept and it will snap to that corner. Reject cancels it. Okay, if I were to get an implied, uh, sorry, uh, an implied snap and pick out in space, it, it, it won't snap to an implied snap. An implied snap just is saying this meets my criteria. Okay, so a little bit more to get used to here. Okay, um, this is probably the biggest thing that you'll have trouble with um, and is one of the most powerful tools. All right, so in this instance here, I've got an implied snap, I've made it a tentative snap, and then I've accepted the tentative snap, I've locked it. Now I'm going to go O for origin. Okay, which means it's not going to start drawing the line till I hit accept. Okay, tentative snap, lock it, O for origin, and come up 50 mil. And what I end up with is I end up with just a line that goes through the corner there. Okay, so this is starting to get a little bit a little bit advanced. All right, um, we get an implied snap. We left and right mouse button together. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to run through and I'm just going to show you how useful some of this is. Because what it means is I can start over here on the grid. I can get a tentative snap, go origin. I want to come up this way 500 millimeters, new origin, O for origin. And I want to come this direction, lock it 500 millimeters. That is my start point, and I want to come up. So that is 500 mil out, 500 mil across to draw a beam. Very, very powerful tool. It's going to take a little bit to get your head around. All right, well, that sums up the basics of uh, navigating around our microstation environment. Um, you need to get really good at using the AccuDraw and getting the hang of those snaps. I encourage you to go and maybe try and find some other videos and bits and pieces as well. Get used to your tentative snap and your and your origin, etc. Um, it takes a little bit to get used to. It's not a natural thing if you've come from an AutoCAD environment. You don't have to hit left and right mouse button together. But it's a, a wonderfully powerful tool once you get the hang of it. So um, I encourage you to practice heaps and get used to it. All right. Well, I'll see you for the next session.